I'll call to order the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board, Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024 at 2 p.m. Um, at this point, I will um, take the roll call. Mary Ann Abadi, present. Dr. Copeland, present. Dr. Giardini, present. Dr. Gorski, present. Dick Kuhner, present. Wendy Larson Bennett, present. Tim Neighbors, Linda Sanquist, <laughs> Mohammed Yunus, Jason Holcomb, present. And welcome all of our guests today. Nice to see the interest. Um, we will now move on to the public comment. We do have a request for public comment. Uh, Beth Pomeroy, it's Beth here? No. Oh, okay. She uh, submitted it online, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was her. Okay. Thank you very much. And we'll move on to our presentations. Um, we have two um, uh, that will be videos one from Crusader and one from UIC. Is that correct? So the videos were already submitted in order to make the meeting time more efficient. That was what we discussed last time. So all the board members had the opportunity to review them. We will now make the presenters available for questions, should there be any questions on the video. Otherwise, they will not uh, be presenting today. We're not going to play the video today. Also, we'll get it there. No. All right. Any? So Crusader would be the first, uh, which would be Will. Are you representing Crusader? Okay. And Terry White. Terry. If you'd like to come to the front of the room. And so if there's any questions Anyone have any on their accelerator award uh, request. I guess, I guess not really a question, but a comment. I appreciate your recognition that we need dedicated space in order to expand your vision of how to have integrated mental and physical health resources. Am I understanding that correctly? You, you have it entirely correct. Okay. One of the reasons that we always had, you know, you've always got a choice. We could have gone, we could have expanded outside our footprint, but we're committed to the integrated model and see that it works. And that's why we chose remodeling in existing space. Because frankly, the demand has just been strong enough that we've kind of outgrown our, our capability. And so, but we wanted to keep, what we find is our patients are often, they are probably within 15 minutes of every one of our sites. And so they're committed to that site and we wanted to, wanted to keep that in play. And that's, that's the reason we're expanding in existing space. And I appreciated your um, statistical analysis of what percentage of your population is in need of these expanded services. So thank you. That was a thank you. good, thoughtful presentation. My other comment was your com continued commitment to integrated services um, because that's really, you, you, you folks deserve a lot of credit for keeping your health system integrated. It, we just find that it works. And so yeah. thank you. Uh, that the synergy created between the behavioral health counselor and, and the family medicine provider is just excellent. And it's, it's, we found it to be, it actually gives the patients a lot of ways to access. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you very much. Me, so thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Moving on to UIC Rockford. Good afternoon, everybody. So this was another video submission. So any questions can I ask? I don't I think it was pretty well stated. So I'm sorry. I thought it was well stated, Doctor. Thank you. Yeah. And it's very exciting. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's we're, the, we're excited by that's it. That's the bigger piece. I have to tell you, I hate making videos and having to look at myself. Doctor, I just so do you, and I guess I'm asking you to look in your crystal ball because sure. I appreciate it. I, I love the idea of using all our higher education facilities in our in our county collaborating on something that I think will increase the supply of providers. Do you ever see U of I having the wherewithal to have an MSW program here in Winnebago County? Uh, we do, and UIUC is interested in it, and oh. UIC is interested. It, it goes to be part of a larger, so there's two components. First of all, it's the larger plan that we've had for a couple of years, which is to bring a new building on campus mm -hmm. that would bring dentistry, social work, public health, and allied health, uh -huh. both physical therapy and occupational therapy. We created the plans for that. We put it through the hierarchy of University of Illinois. It's been approved by the president of the board of trustees. And now we're waiting for a capital plan coming from the state to the university so we can go forward. So within that would be a program for social work. In well, clarity, this, these programs are going to be focused on training rural practitioners. It's going to expand our rural programs in medicine, pharmacy, and nursing. However, there's always an important component of it that stays within Rockford and Winnebago County. Now that we're, and initially we're gonna do that with, it gets a bit complicated, with the UIC School of Public Health in Chicago. Mm -hmm. However, the UIUC program, which is also part of University of Illinois, but in Urbana-Champaign, is the one that already has a BSW and MSW online, and they've articulated that this goes well, they would like to come and have a physical presence here. So, and looking at my crystal ball, I think it will happen at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. One of those two avenues, I'm not sure which. Okay. But, and remember, I mean, Rockford is a city, but 10 miles from here, you are in rural America. Uh, we are well aware. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think it was a great proposal. Any other questions? Okay, there we go. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay, the next presentation will be um, Marshmallow Hope. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you see the screen? I can see it. Okay. Yes. So I apologize in advance. I'm going to be talking a little fast because I have to condense my 20 minute presentation into 10. So <laughs> my name is Laura Kane. I am the founder and executive director of Marshmallow's Hope nonprofit organization. An organization that I started after losing my 14 year old son to suicide in 2018. Shortly after his death, I began posting motivational messages on social media, encouraging kids to please keep living and stay alive. What I didn't realize is that these kids would actually slide up on my story and began uh, talking to me about their own struggles with depression and suicidal ideations. And so I began to mentor those kids. And that's how Marshmallow's Hope was actually born. During my time mentoring um, several children, we had two different instances of individuals who attempted suicide. Um, one of the kids attempted suicide in December of 21. We could not get him into treatment until March of 2022. A second child then attempted in January of 2022, and we could not get him into treatment until June of 2022. That was a six month span. Um, and that second child reattempted suicide and was hospitalized in critical condition. I quickly learned that timely intervention 
and access to mental health care is critical for individuals experiencing crises or urgent mental health care needs. Our business model was actually built around the wait list in our community. Whether we have a wait list of six months, three months, or a week, Marshall <laughs> provides immediate access to care throughout our no, no wait policy, ensuring that individuals referred to our program receive prompt interventions, reducing the risk associated with delayed treatment. Our linkage agreement with Rosecrans um, actually allows us to just be that stabilization hub and offer immediate access to care within 24 to 48 hours, addressing mental health needs without the traditional waiting periods in our community. We then get them on the Rosecrans wait list if they're not already on there, and we transition them to that longer or long-term and higher level of care. Our organization thrives on strategic partnerships that enhance our ability to serve our community effectively, collaborating with local health care providers, educational institutions, community organizations, and government agencies, which allow us to broaden our reach, leverage resources, and provide comprehensive care to those in need and their families. Since we have been established, um, we have served 272 youth in our community. This program um, risk assessment chart was actually our performance uh, for 2023. What we do is we measure um, youth that come to our program. We do an initial risk assessment at the intake, then reassess youth at three months and then at six months. If you take a look at the suicide column, you'll see that we had 78 self-reported suicide attempts um, from youth that were, that were participated in our program. At three months, we only had three re attempts, and then at six months, we had zero. Currently, we're located at Forest City Church. Uh, and while we are, you know, while the church has given us the opportunity and the ability to begin our program, we have outgrown it and it is limiting in, in many ways, which is why we're seeking funding for our own space through this accelerator grant. In our community, access to higher levels of care, such as intensive outpatient programs are limited with only one entity offering such services. The shortage compounded by insurance barriers often prevent individuals from accessing the care they need locally. And as a result, we've had to refer several clients of ours out of state for treatment, which can further traumatize families by disrupting support networks and increasing stress during an already challenging time. I also want to address that regarding our services on the topic of eating disorders, we were asked to consider the eating disorders in our initial proposal as that is a huge gap in our community and we did consider it as that population is very high risk for suicide. However, Marshmallows Hope will no longer be providing that eating disorder component um, per your modification request. I also want to actually, oops, sorry, um, I want you to take a look at this building. This is the actual building that we are applying for through the accelerator grant. Um, so if you take a look at the environment, unlike the intimidating atmosphere of hospitals or institution, institutionalized settings, our center offers a more home-like, conducive, and welcoming space for youth and families. Our program is a step-up, step-down continuum of care approach, which ensures that individuals receive timely approach levels of care, promoting smoother local community transitions to offer levels of treatment. Our model is designed to address the stigma surrounding mental illness, providing a safe and supportive environment where individuals can seek help without the fear of judgment. We're also very proud to share that we recently completed a rigorous audit and earned a three-year CARP accreditation, underscoring our commitment to excellence in mental health care. During the process, 1,672 compliance standards were reviewed and we received recommendations on only nine and zero fails, showcasing our dedication to meeting and exceeding industry standards. Additionally, we're currently in the process of provider enrollment with Medicaid, a crucial step that will enable us to bill Medicaid for our services, further expanding to uh, access to vital mental health resources in our community. The last step in actually becoming a Medicaid provider is just the building inspection, which we've put on hold until we know whether we'll be awarded this grant or not. 
In addition, we're actively participating with the Illinois Department of Health Care and Family Services to enhance accessibility to mental health services. Moreover, we're strengthening our partnership and collaboration with Rosecrans through the state's Pathways Program. I have provided handouts of the slide of this slide for our discussion on building financial sustainability. The figures for year one are delivered from our current client base and the services that we could have been built Medicaid in 2023, indicating our projected revenue. For years two and years three, we projected a 25% increase in clients annually to illustrate potential revenue growth. Recognizing the challenges of therapist recruitment in our community, our strategic plan involved actively seeking candidates from out of state and beyond our county. With a dedicated team, including an LCSW, an LCPC, and an LSW, we successfully recruited professionals from outside of our service area. We utilized evidence-based treatment through CBT, DBT, trauma-informed care, and mindfulness practices. We also want to mention that bilingual services are limited in our community, but at Marshmallows Hope, we have bilingual staff members and therapists proficient in both English and Spanish to cater to our Hispanic population in Winnebago County. Now, if you take a look at this graph, in 2018, our community experienced two tragic youth suicides, one of which was my child. <coughs> the following year, there were two more. In 2020, one more occurred. The numbers remain concerning and on the rise in 2021 with six cases and three more in 2022. However, since the full implementation of our program in 2023, there have been zero reported youth suicides in our community. Our program is aiding and mitigating suicide risk right here in Winnebago County, and we're extremely proud of that. Before my son died, I knew zero people who had lost a loved one to suicide. I didn't know a single person. And through Marshmallow's Hope, these are the faces of suicide and the people of which I've come to know through their loved one's eyes and Marshmallow's Hope. That video was of my beautiful boy, taken only a couple of days before he ended his life by suicide. Um, I was the mom that saw what you saw in that video, just a smiley child in our community, right? He was, sorry, I don't wanna get emotional. Um, I was the mother that didn't know the warning signs. But with obtaining my master's degree in social work from Aurora University in only three and a half years, I now aid our community because no other mother or Winnebago County resident should ever have to endure the trauma of losing a loved one to suicide. Suicide is preventable. And so today I'm here to urge Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board to partner with us, just like Rosecrans and all of the other entities who see the value in our program. We want you to consider partnering and implementing our intensive outpatient program and step up, step down continuum of care, aiming to prevent further tragic losses in our community. Regardless of funding our program, however, we appeal for your consideration of our accelerator grant, emphasizing the critical need for supportive environments like ours, for the sake of individuals like my son, Zachary, whose memory inspires our mission, Please let us work together to make a difference and save lives. Thank you very much for your time. Any questions? Or? Yeah. Any questions, Kim? Kim. Uh, I just want to know where is the building located and how is it? How far is it from the bus? The public bus. So it's actually located at Cherry Valley Mall. It's um, by the feed store up at Bell School. The bus line literally goes right, right to it. So um, public access, that's why we pick that location. It's because it's a centralized location to Winnebago County and it can be accessed through public transportation. My only comment would be, I've seen a tremendous number of organizations start in this community over my years in social service. I want to compliment you 
on what you have done with your passion and what you have, have turned and made it so productive and positive. Thank you. You're very I welcome. second that, Laura. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for what you've done and congratulate you on your accreditation. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, after your initial evaluation stabilization of these youth, have you, through that process, have you been able to see any decrease in the wait time because you could facilitate the shortening to the higher level of care, or is it just the way it is? Unfortunately, in our community, it just seems to be the way it is. Um, I know that there's a lot of staffing issues with other entities and things like that, which is why we went out of our county and out of our state to recruit people. Um, I have seen some some levels. Um, <coughs> it depends on the level of care. So uh, to to better answer your response for outpatient counseling, I have seen shortening of wait list um, for higher levels of care, which is why we desperately need to open this IOC program because we have nowhere for our youth to go. There's only one entity, um, and unfortunately, because there's a huge um, families who are who have Medicaid have to go through an extensive process to be able to get that approval to be seen at that higher level of care. Um, these kids are not receiving that. We're having to send them out of state, which is unacceptable. Do, do you see a way to, do you have ideas about how to broaden access? So, I mean, one of the things I see is like Crusader, is talking about expanding uh, services for kids. Um, there's more family counseling. You're talking about a much more intensive level. Well, so what we actually do, um, you know, at Marshmallows Hope, again, because I was that mom that was not educated, I believe in when, when an individual comes to us, yes, we treat the individual, but truly what we need to do to make things better is we need to treat the entire family unit and we need to educate the entire family unit. So what we do through Marshmallows Hope and what I hope that other entities um, can learn to model after is um, we provide therapeutic mentoring for kids and we also provide parent peer support because when we provide that peer support for the family, for the parents, and we educate them, then we can actually validate the individual. If we don't do that, we just send them back to their environments and then it's a vicious cycle. We're stuck in this cycle, right? So we need to focus more on the entire family unit rather than just the individual that we're dealing with or treating. So just for future thought, I, I think I, I would appreciate more information based on your experiences about how to implement that more broadly in our community. Absolutely. I would love to sit down with you guys and, and get more entities to really implement this model. We've seen, a, I mean, the numbers, you've seen them. We, we've had youth that, youth that have come to our organization who have attempted 12 times prior to coming to us and never attempted again. And parents are like, how, We've taken them everywhere. We've done everything. What's different about you? Um, and it, I really think that because of my personal story and because of the program that we've built, we are able to really honestly understand what that individual is going through and, and um, just teach the entire family unit how to validate them. Thank you. Okay. I don't think there's any other questions or comments. So thank you a lot. Thank, thank you very much for your time. And um, I just want to say thank you very much to all the other organizations, Live for Lolly, and all the other orgs. Thank you so much for what you guys do in our community. We appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, Alignment Rockford will also have a video. <clears throat> Okay, hello, my name is Emily Ponicky. I'm the Executive Director of Alignment Rockford. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to answer some of your questions and present today. Um, before I get started, I want to say thank you to those who came with me today who are from the coalition um, that is the Healing Center Student Support Team. I have with me today um, 
in no particular order because I can't keep looking back here. Um, we have Brian Doran, principal of one of our pilot schools that is in this proposal, um, Constance Lane Elementary School. Maureen Kirschman, the family and community engagement manager at Rockford Public School District. Cornell Bondurant, the director of the social emotional learning at the Boys and Girls Club of Rockford. Shelton Kay, the executive director of Rockford Regional Health Council. Daniel Potter, superintendent of operations at Rockford Park District. And Julissa Bondurant, early childhood mental health and data manager at Columbia Rockford. The Strong Family, Strong Communities program. Sorry, just turned off my iPad. Mm -hmm. Um, is a holistic family and student support focus program which will be part of our Healing Center Student Support Project in Rockford. Based on the science of resilience, the Healing Center Student Support Initiative imagines the school as a place in which critical components of support and resources can be woven around each student, effectively uplifting them to be agents of their own healing processes. Our Rockford Initiative is a coalition of community organizations that includes RPS 205, City of Rockford, Winnebago County Health Department, Rosecrans, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Rockford Park District, Rockford Regional Health Council, and others who have been working since May of 2023 to develop an effective framework and strategies to enact this work in Rockford. This two-year accelerator proposal will enable our teams to jumpstart some of this work by bringing families together, listening to their needs and concerns, developing and implementing responsive supports for them. This grant will allow us to facilitate a program in which the healing of community and individual trauma may be achieved through a combination of improved family school relational networks, the development of individual and collective leadership capacity, and the support of improved student mental health outcomes sense of efficacy and sense of belonging. This specific program represents one component of a larger effort to mitigate and address individual and systemic trauma for students in Rockford, starting with eight Rockford Public School District pilot schools and their communities. The, this proposal focuses on the communities of the five elementary schools of these pilot schools, addressing the area of the impact of social capital building providing a structure in which improved networks of relationships among people of these communities are able to function at their highest level, augmenting the long range and intensive work that our teams will be doing in the schools and in the communities of these schools. This initiative falls, around, falls under the community wraparound side of our Healing Center student support work as it engages families outside of the school day and introduces linking to community-based services and support along with school-based supports and resources. The program proposes the application of three tiers of engagement to provide potential for long-lasting family-led leadership in the schools and their communities. Rather than providing simply a program for two years, Adding the layers of tiers two and three create an opportunity for long lasting community based parent led continuity. <coughs> tier one. Tier one is the family school engagement component of our project, available to any family of the five elementary schools with the goal of fostering school community, increasing parent school engagement around the student, responsibly developing mutual learning opportunities for schools and parents in supporting students and each other and improving social emotional outcomes and well-being well in students. Up to 1,500 families will be able to take part in this program over the course of two years. Our theory of change for tier one is based on research into family school engagement and successful national and international models. The Harvard Family Research Project states that for children and youth to be successful, there must be an array of linked learning supports around them. Along with this premise, research shows, and we know, that home and school are among the most powerful environments impacting students' developmental and um, mental health, and that both play important roles in supporting both social, emotional, and academic outcomes in students. Furthermore, systemic and generational trauma must be acknowledged and addressed in any effort toward healing of trauma and the building of resilience in youth. 
With these theories in mind, the basis for the structure of our tier one application of the Strong Family, Strong Communities program is based on vetted, validated, and successful models being deployed in schools both nationally and internationally. Internationally, an example of this is the FAST program. Families and schools together, FAST, is a collaborative prevention and parent involvement program designed to build relationships with families and between families and schools to address childhood problems such as school failure, alcohol and drug abuse, violence, delinquency, and child abuse through an eight week program that is based on theories of behavioral change. The Healing Center Student Support Community Wraparound Team and school leadership with parent participation will use the framework of this and other successful models to develop a localized school community responsive application of these frameworks. This is the largest segment of our grant application, reaching the most families and allowing our teams to bring a strong start to all five of the pilot elementary schools. I was invited here today to describe how the Kofi Way fits into our model. The Kofi Way represents tiers two and three of the program model. Their inclusion in this proposal is based on evidence and research that increased parent social capacity increases positive outcomes in other family school engagement and in student focused intervention strategies. Separate from the strong family school based program, which will continue, continue to run simultaneously for the two years of this grant at all five schools, another opportunity for more engagement for those who are interested will be proposed in tiers two and three. These will be available for parents and caregivers who elect to enroll and that will accommodate up to 50 individuals. This combined cohort composed of parents representing all five of our pilot schools will meet in a non-school location for a series of personal, family, and leadership skill building classes, which utilize the Kofi Way model of parental advocacy and social capital building. Tier two, it comprises the phase one of the Kofi Way, the self, family, and team building which is focused on individual and family leadership and goal setting, as well as small team building skills. The third tier of our model begins scaffolding the skills and tools learned in the second tier into community leadership and policy systems advocacy skill building. It includes the Kofi Ways phase two and phase three. Phase two is community outreach and action. This Phase is focused on building relationships with other community residents and entities and conducting door-to-door -door engagement in the neighborhood. The Kofi Way Phase 3, Policies and Systems Change, is focused on building relationships across cultures and communities and with professional allies both inside and outside of systems in order to win policy and systems change. It is important to note that participants in the Kofi Way training will also be able to continue their participation in their school Strong Families program. These schedules will not interfere with each other and families will be able to take part in both. The Kofi Way is an independently validated evidence-based model that scaffolds layers of personal and community leadership training with ongoing systemic policy and advocacy networks and support. This creates a pathway to sustain successful empowerment of individuals who participate in the training. Independent analysis by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation has shown the efficacy of Kofi's adaptability across urban, suburban, and rural settings in Illinois and among a varied demographic, including grandparents, teen parents, fathers, families with young children, and others. Participants reported significant personal and familial, familial advancements with notable improvements in educational, financial, and health-related endeavors. Other things included in the report is uh, state level advancements made by coalitions of Kofi trained parents, including the adoption of a new parent engagement framework and the establishment of a family advisory committee under the Illinois Early Learning Council, the restoration of childcare subsidies for over 200,000 families in Illinois, the initiation of early intervention redlining campaign and others. Um, this area of change for our tiers two and three is to provide access to resources and support that will amplify and elevate the voices of the parent caregiver leaders in their ability to advocate for change in critical areas of need related to trauma and 
mental health of their children and our students. From our vantage point looking forward at this moment in our work, we have identified the Kofi Way as one model of implementing tiers two and three because of its structure and proven efficacy as described in our previous slides. But in our work, our families will lead our process and we value their voice in guiding us to move forward. Our teams will begin a series of engagement sessions with families in all of our pilot schools this month, and that will continue throughout our schools through June. All agencies involved in this work will also be engaged in the schools and surrounding neighborhoods now all the way through the summer months before the programming of this grant will begin. And I also intentionally built in additional time of our program schedule to have deeper family engagement through the tier one process before beginning to implement the tiers two and tiers three, or tiers two and three. Because our engagement family, with our families is still underway and it will increase and deepen through tier one of this grant, our team identifies three ways in which tiers two and three might be implemented in this project. Our work with our families in our school will define these ways as we approach the time for them to begin. The first way is that we have trained COVID facilitators come to Rockford for a full engagement, facilitating all sessions with train the trainer opportunities for local agencies, but that all of the COFI phases one through three, which are the tiers two and three of our model, are fully facilitated and carried out by trainers um, for this project. The second way is that we train local community members as facilitators of the COFI way to bring the model to Rockford via our own local agencies through the Healing Center student support team and work, and that phases one through three of the Kofi Way are fully facilitated by Rockford-based facilitators. The third option is that the Healing Center student support team, which includes experts from throughout multiple fields of our community working together with our families, finds that parents and caregivers identify needs that will be met more successfully through the application of another model, either locally developed and deployed or sourced elsewhere with the same outcomes of capacity building as the goal. As we continue with the families of our school, we will learn what will shape the way that our team ultimately defines the implementation of the Strong Families, Strong Communities project, developing responsive opportunities and options that meet the needs of each school. I was also asked to address the future plans of the Middle Development Instrument, the MDI, in, relationship, in relation to our efforts to expand the EDI to Winnebago County. In Rockford Public School District right now, the Middle Development Instrument, the MDI, is being used to get a student reported community level look at many of the critical components of student health and well being in the elementary and middle school level to help guide our Healing Center student support work. <coughs> Specifically, the MDI asks questions about key indicators identified in science of resilience, such as the presence of a trusted adult at home or at school, feelings of efficacy, and feelings of belonging, among other things. With the opportunity to introduce the MDI in our community, we are also cognizant of the opportunity we have to do a longitudinal life course, have a longitudinal life course lens on our students' experience if this is administered in alignment with the EDI surveys now and going forward. With that in mind, I have given you a possible timeline um, here that you can see for the MDI EDI survey cadence, which will allow up to three surveys of the same cohorts, starting in kindergarten, surveying again at fourth or fifth grade, and again at eighth grade. Each bubble on our timeline here represents a cohort with the large bubbles representing the expanded survey canvas, Winnebago County. For the Healing Center work, in every other year, staggered implementation of the MDI in the Rockford Public School District is the most likely application to guide our work in this community. Using this timeline and taking the staggered approach into mind, as well as the life course value of alignment of the MDI to the EDI cohorts, we see that 2029 would be an ideal year for MDI to be expanded to the county, just following our second EDI countywide survey. That said, if communities outside of Rockford are interested in including the MDI before that, we would be, of course, open to looking at moving that opportunity up. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take questions. Yes. I, I apologize for asking something you may have, you have a lot, yeah. <laughs> you've given us a lot. You may have already answered this, and maybe you were getting at a, a tier three 
But is your initial identification of students who would benefit from the program and their families more reactive or proactive or mixed? In other words, do families come forward and self-identify that they would like to be a part of it with a child who's experienced trauma? Or within the schools, do you recognize the child go out and reach out to them? So I guess I, that's not clear. Okay, good. that's a good question. So the Healing Center Student Support Work is bigger than this project. Um, and, and that team has um, identified the eight pilot schools for this work in an effort to establish a social and emotional learning framework within the schools that addresses trauma and creates um, an environment of healing and resilience building in the school day. Additionally, we are providing community wraparound for families, all families of the communities of those schools. Specific neighborhood-based wraparound is focused on our elementary schools. So we are piloting an application of basically combined efforts of within the school day, um, universal trauma support and uh, resilience building um, environmental changes, as well as external and family led um, supports, linkages to resources and neighborhood improvement led by the family voice of those schools. The schools were identified through um, a process of um, looking at two matrices that was developed by our team. We looked at a matrix utilizing EDI data, local um, demographic data, national neighborhood equity index data, um, at the neighborhood level, looking at the census tracts of the community and identified vulnerable, the highest vulnerability levels of neighborhoods in our community. And then we used a different index utilizing um, different pieces of school um, outcomes, such as attendance, behavior, academics, um, sense of belonging, sentence of efficacy reported by students, et cetera, and, and got vulnerable schools. We mapped those on top of each other, and that's how we wound up with our pilot schools, which are McIntosh, Lewis Lemon, Constance Lane, Rolling Green, Gregory, Risa, Lincoln, and Jefferson. So it's more of a universal yeah. pilot. I have a question. Um, well presented, number one. Number two, you have a program you said starting this month. So this project, the Healing Center Student Support Project Initiative, will be a longitudinal work doing this pilot work in these schools and developing prototyping for the Rockford Public School District and the community to utilize to expand. Okay, out. when could this data be available? Part of our so part of our work with that is engaging families with our first. Um, whole school listening sessions. We start those this month and those will run through June. Okay. Can we get that data? Can we see the statistics of how that's working? Sure. Because this seems like you're taking on a lot. Mm -hmm. And and good for you for taking on a lot, but is it going to be, you know, efficient? Is it going to come across as, hey, we're going to go out there and we're going to save this. Let us see the data. Okay, so that way we can make some more better evaluations on this. Because when we get your proposal and it's, you know, five, six, seven pages long, you know, it takes us over an hour to read those and we reread them and reread them. And I want to make sure that we're giving you the benefit of the doubt. So if we can get the data out of that, like you said, till June, let us know what's going on. I mean, it's April, we obviously got, you know, two and a half months to go here or whatever, mm -hmm. but let us know. This gives some kind of an indicator of how that's going to work. You know, what, what might be useful is you could, if you could send to Jason, <laughs> or maybe you you already have it, the EDI link so that we can look at the EDI maps. Sure. Because I know if you've been involved in alignment, you know what it is, but I don't think the whole board sure. is aware of that. And it, that's important. Yeah. Good, good point. That. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's one. So my, my question is, um, I, I really appreciate what the program uh, says that it does. And I really appreciate what I think it can do, but I just need a clarification on um, how does it align with mental health and substance abuse? So everything that we're doing with the Healing Center Student Support work is to help to mitigate trauma 
both individual and um, institutional systemic for students in the community. Um, and so this program specifically is to address trauma through a holistic family engagement by building the advocacy, the um, linkages, the, the opportunities for families and parents to address issues as needed in their own school community. It may be a different issue. It may be violence um, between children in one school. It may be a completely different um, issue in another school, so it's going to be kind of responsive to the needs of the schools and the families. Um, and then also to provide the social emotional um, opportunities through out of school engagement in extracurricular activities that will be part of this program for the students also that will be provided by the Rockford, Public Park, the Rockford Park District, Boys and Girls Club, and the YMCA, who you know are together um, using the Hello Insights tool to define areas of growth for social emotional learning and they will be implementing that those goals in in that tool to help guide the activities that they're doing with the students so it is addressing all parts of the family to help build um, a community network between their schools and the families to build a network between the, the members of the schools who are um, attending together who are in the same neighborhood who have um, who are living together outside of the schools and also to provide good resources and support to families, to parents, and to the students separately on different things that they need. In honesty, I don't know for a minute all the research that you've cited and all the where that's coming from. My biggest question is that we're not on the same mission. Mm -hmm. This is our conceptual model of the community support program. Mm -hmm. What we're addressing, what we're attempting to address are children and adults in, in addiction where that are where there's serious impairment, where, they, where these folks are not able to function at their age or grade in, in, <coughs> in their world. And so again, we're, we're talking about um, looking <laughs> servicing programs that are addressing that population. And in a sense, I, you know, I, I experience your, your program as part of prevention. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. We're, we're dealing with casualties. And, and even with what we have done thus far, I mean, you, as you heard through part of this, we still haven't arrived at what we would love to see in terms of an array of services that are addressing the seriously impaired people. And so I will just start from my point of view. I that that's I, I conceptually support you at the same time. Do I see, in my opinion, money from our board with your program? And, and it would be no. I mean, I, I, I just have to, and that would be the reason why. Not because it's not good, but because it's a different mission. Thank you for your perspective on that. If I may. Uh, part of what I understand us to, to be doing, even as we look at our system framework, is to ultimately try to deal with systems. And that's literally what Alignment Rock is trying to do, is address a systemic issue. And that's why the particular schools were picked. And that's why they're being piloted, because the kids in those schools are actually the ones who are experiencing the various different types of trauma that eventually wind up in some of these other places that we just talked about. So the idea is, are we going to, and I, I hear what you're saying in terms of, yeah, there's a lot of prevention, uh, sort of resilience building, capacity building, and all that type of thing that is inherent in what you said, but at the same time, the reason that these schools are even in the pilot is because the kids in those schools are actually the ones who are experiencing the trauma that we're trying to mitigate through other programs. And so if we can get it from both ends and sort of sort of figure out how to turn off the spigot instead of getting bigger mops, then that's a better use of resources, particularly if they already have a sort of uh, collaboration, a sort of um, a collage of community organizations that are already sort of working together to try to uh, address the trauma that our kids are facing in the schools. Because quite frankly, the reason the schools are the way they are 
and you'd already done the research, is because of the trauma that the kids I know. It's, I know. are experiencing not, right there. Yeah, it's not, that I know it's not simple. But, but, you know, we kind of are in this, here's the dike, here are the holes, the wall is cracking. We know there's water coming in. And the question, so I think in our first couple of years, our methodology has been, let's stop the water, the most serious problem. But now we're a little bit down the road, and I'm, I'm sitting here showing Tim the EDI map. Um, and Ed, I think you said it well. This is about, okay, so now we see the cracks where the water isn't pouring in yet. If we can repair the cracks or prevent further cracking, we're not going to have to plug the holes and bail because we're not going to be filling the bucket up. Anymore. Yeah, and I want to emphasize too, just to kind of chime in that this is one component of a bigger um, initiative, and this will accelerate the beginning of a longer process that will be um, making quite a significant change in a lot of the systemic. Um, experiences of students and youth and their families in areas of our community that do need um, that 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 are what we're dealing with today you know it's a lot of disinvestment a lot of things that have led into our system failing families and failing students and failing um, i had once one um actually it was at one of our pilot schools, an educator tell us that, well, even if students come into the school um, without any ACEs, they will have them by just being here because there's so much going on here. There's just a lot of difficulties with students that are having a lot of issues at home and, are, and we want them to grow and be educated and be good citizens and have opportunities and resources to meet their potential. And um, it's just, Something has to be done. The work will be done either way. The people here represent just a small portion of who is behind this work and will do the work. But this will accelerate our ability to interact with families, understand the needs, give us a really deep understanding while also elevating many of the components that need to be set into place faster, more um, efficiently, and be able to move this work forward faster. So that we're not back, we're not talking about this in eight years with a little bit of change. We're talking about this in three or four years with a lot of change. And we can see those results. Okay. I'm gonna and what I want to remind the board, we're not voting on this today. It's gonna go through a total review. So um, I think we can get a lot of questions, but Bill, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with Dr. Copeland, actually, in the comments he made about the importance of the work. And the halo effect of a second grader who's experiencing trauma is a far outreaching thing within the family structure and all the things that keep the ACEs and everything else. But I have to be blunt. I didn't understand your answer when I asked the question previous that I, previously that I did. The second grader was acting out of one of your pilot schools, who's not showing up, who's being aggressive toward others, but the family does not come to you to self-identify, you go to them. Okay, thank you. That helps me understand your question better. So in this program, we will be doing everything we can to bring families in the door. Our social emotional framework building within the schools is not this program, but that will be addressing those issues. That addresses building out and bolstering and um, making better the MTSS three-tier um, program for the students so that the students who are in level two and level three of the MTSS uh, model, which is what happens when you have a tier one is prevention for children, tier two is children who are starting to run into some problems, then there are different supports and resources and opportunities for them there within the school. Tier three is the high level um, you know, needs for those who have critical issues. 
That work will be done by our social emotional school based teams, not our community wraparound team. That's different work that will be happening in our schools and it is not part of this program, but yes, it will be addressed. So that student, we are working with each of the pilot schools, all eight of them, to help work through a matrix of becoming a healing centered school with a strong tiered uh, layers of support that help to, first of all, build out the tier one for prevention. Second of all, build out and bolster plug the gaps, increase accessibility, increase um, opportunity for those tier two and tier three needs so that all of those students who are identified get all of the things that they need. We spent a lot of time um, working with schools to understand where the handoff problems are happening, where the gaps are, where the community will be able to come in and, and close those gaps and create those linkages to um, resources and opportunities that are needed at the tier two and tier three. So with this program, that is not part of this program. This is a community wraparound program. That is the work of our social emotional A team and it's different work, but yes, it will be there. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you. Very much. Um, I'd be remiss, I did not um, bring this forward earlier and I would like to ask for a moment of silence for the recent victims of violent episodes in our community. Thank you. Moving into our monthly activity report, Jason, do you want to highlight just a few? Sure, I would like to highlight a few things. Uh, we have been, uh, since the adoption of the new strategic plan, looking at systems, coordination, uh, objectives, in addition to our uh, regularly scheduled programming. Uh, one of the things we have been talking about for a couple of years now is transportation. We have modeled after what some other mental health boards have done, and I know we've discussed this, but I just want to let you know it's live now. There is a request for qualifications for a HIPAA compliant rideshare program that potentially could be made available to our funded programs to ensure that they have door-to-door -door transportation for any of the mental health services that they provide. Um, we will need two board member volunteers to join us on an internal steering committee that will review and, pro and make the procurement decision on that. Um, so you don't have to tell me right now, but please reach out to Mark if you're interested in being part of that. Dick and Wendy. Well, okay. things I did first. <laughs> well, um, Mark will follow up with both of you and we'll let you know how to participate in that process. Um, secondly, I wanted to mention the Building Bridges uh, community event that we partner with NAMI on. Uh, has been scheduled for this year. You'll see the flyer that we have there in Chelsea. Is there anything you want to say about that? Yeah, so that is funded NAMI through the grant process. Um, so that will be in May Mental Health Month. It will be down the street. Uh, we wanted to make sure it was important that it was downtown um, location. So it'll be at Embassy Suites. Um, so marker calendars, there's a QR code on there to scan, and then I'll be following up with programs about scheduling, getting them at the uh, <coughs> there. So yes, sir. Is there a, um, a link that we can share on our social media? Yeah, so um, there is a Facebook event that is uh, co-hosted by both NAMI and us. Uh, if you go to NAMI, Northern Illinois, Northern Illinois Facebook page, you can see it on there. Um, and I'll be resharing that post um, this week. So um, that's where you can find it. So. And so we're um, really excited to have a national speaker, uh, Brian Novak. Um, he was a skateboarder who got involved with um, addicted to meth, and he has then cleaned himself up, and he does supportive housing. So he himself is a success story of being in really a dark place. Um, it is the best-selling addiction um, book on Amazon, so he will be there. So the event is free, but um, you, if you register, you're able to purchase the book that then you can sign at the event. So um, that's not required, but if you want the book um, that is available for him to sign, and he'll be doing photos after. So, 
All right, and then the, just looking ahead, I'll just mention again that we have a summit scheduled um, as part of the regional CESA advisory committee that's looking at the CESA Act and how that's gonna be implemented. That local group, which covers four or five Northern Illinois region counties is gonna be hosting a summit on Friday, April 12th to share ideas, challenges, best practices, struggles in a um, group forum. If anyone wants to participate in that, there are still open seats available for that. There is no charge for that. Um, so please let me know if you're interested and I can send you the registration information. Uh, I will be going and participating. <coughs> Okay, moving on into our action items, I will need a motion to approve the March 2024 meeting minutes. So moved. Second, Dr. Gordon, Dr. Jardine. Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minute, minute meetings for March 2024, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, moving into our core program contract language for FY24. Okay. We are moving to multi-year contracts and for our core programs, as we've previously discussed, I took all the feedback from board members on things that we should incorporate in the new contracts. I've been reviewing that with legal. The contract that I have presented in the uh, contract language that is in the board packet, I will address what some of those changes are. Um, what the vote is, is to approve that core language and then any modifications to that would be made in conjunction with legal with the final approval of the board president if there are things that agencies will not agree to, but without you know serious uh, detriment can be negotiated. So here are the changes. Uh, we are moving to either a multi-year, so some programs based on approval will get a three-year contract. Others will get a one-year contract that has an option for renewal up to two additional years. Okay. There is more clarification on what constitutes best evidence for evidence submission on reimbursement request. After three years of this, our finance department and doing many of these reviews in conjunction with myself, would like to provide a little bit more clarity of what the expectation is. Um, there will now be a six month cutoff for any final submission at the end of a program year. We've had numerous organizations that several months after the program year ended, hey, we made a mistake in March of last year. We've always tried to accommodate that. We understand that for budgeting purposes, we can't have, you know, 12 months out, get a $100,000 mistake request that we have to accommodate that we didn't budget for. So there's a hard cutoff on that is six months. We have added a clarifying statement regarding uh, organizations need to have a, an appropriate residency standard and requirement. We have added client satisfaction requirement as part of the outcomes for all programs. Previously, we had made that a special condition for many programs. I believe all of our programs have been able to accommodate that, even some that, you know, it seems like it was maybe less possible and it's been embraced by our program. So we just wanna make sure that's a fixture and what we do moving forward. Um, we have taken out a reference to the Code of Federal Regulations. <laughs> If you've ever read the grant requirements in the Code of Federal, Federal Regulations, it's pretty, pretty uh, intense. And I don't think that uh, functionally it's helpful to our contracts. So we've removed that. I think we've addressed all the things that we need to in our contract language at this point. Um, we have also added the addition uh, within the contract for funded programs to have a mechanism to request emergency funding should there be something that's completely out of budget that was unanticipated that would otherwise not allow for their program to move forward 
and the amount for that is up to 10% of their yearly budget for a one-time emergency that can keep the program going forward and they'd have to make a written request for that. That is not open to any agency in the community that's within the contracts of a core funded program. And then the final thing would be um, in section five, we've added that any failure to meet the outcomes that are you know, basically being targeted could result in case file audits, additional site visits, or some type of other corrective action plan. And I will ask when you are making a motion that I did find one error in section 15 where a sentence, the final sentence of that section says failure to meet progress towards. And that was later addressed in section five, which I just mentioned. So that language from section 15 should be removed. And so um, if a motion is made to approve this, I would ask that you make that motion with the removal of that incomplete sentence in section 15. This is all gone through legal? Yes. Okay. Oh, I hey, see. I'm going to need for a sentence for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Got I'm, need, I'm going to need a motion for approval. Tim? I'd like to make a motion to approve this uh, contract with a suggested amended by, amendment by Jason. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Who's the official second? <laughs> yeah, they would say hi. Keep pointing. Okay. Um, any questions, comments? All right, hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, signed. All right, moving on <coughs> to the accelerator award paid for deliverable contract language. Okay, so same premise here. This is um, template core language that would only be modified with review of legal and final approval of the board president. We have drafted contracts, again, gone through all legal review for a pay for deliverables funding model for the accelerator programs. Uh, we've previously discussed this, happy to speak to it more, but just in summary, we do not think expenditure reimbursements on capital projects are gonna be the best situation for us. Um, I don't wanna, look through 100 seat receipts from Ace Hardware or Home Depot to determine if we're gonna approve it. So ultimately what we're trying to pay for are the results. This is a tiered release of payments when set deliverables are met to meet the objectives of the project. The first amount is a 25% payment and then at thresholds met, additional payments will be received. The board will withhold 5% of the final funding until the final deliverable is met so that there is some leverage to make sure a project is completed. Good, good. Questions? Uh, uh, I need a motion. I, need, I have a question. Oh, you well, that. Uh, section six, Jason, and county board approval. I'm given our January one change. I'm assuming the word appropriation because it, uh, subject to the appropriation of our budget by the Winnebago County Board, uh, the word appropriation simply means the overall approval of our process, not the approval of the expenditure of dollars. Yeah. Correct. That, that would be the interpreted meaning of that in the current context. Some of this language was left over and in consideration of whether or not to modify it, um, I feel there's no harm for it to be in there. And I think that that the county is still the tax collecting body in this, so they receive the funds. So I think it's just, yes, you have the correct understanding of the legislation, the meaning of that, um, but it is just some board protection for unforeseen circumstances that the money is not able to be accessed. Got it. Okay. Any other? All right, um, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Yeah. So let's skip through them. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. No further comment or hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. Oh, it's the same time. All right. Moving on to the bulk of 
my reading for <laughs> all of you. <laughs> okay, resolution number 2024 X, authorizing the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board funding and the allocation of grant funds for core program funding applications for the program year four to six. Whereas the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board is Community Mental Health Board operating pursuant to the Illinois Community Mental Health Act. Whereas the Winnebago County Mental Health Board published a three year strategic plan defining priorities tar and target population for the program years 2024 to 2026 and released a core program funding for program years. 2024 to 2026. Notice of funding opportunities, um, requesting proposals to renew successful programs and proposal for new services that fill the remaining service gaps, including eating disorder treatment, harm reduction or low income detox services, infant and early childhood, older adults 50 plus, substance abuse and family and community support, supportive housing, youth, family, and adults, youth crisis services, ages five to 17 and other. Whereas the Winnebago County Mental Health Board received 39 applications requesting renewal funding totaling $61,897,422 and 82 cents and nine applications requesting new funding totaling $4,423,933.70, but only $60 million is available for funding for renewal and new proposals. Whereas the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board members reviewed, evaluated, and scored the 39 continued funding applications and nine new funding applications according to the established scoring rubrics that were published alongside the notice of funding opportunity and developed recommendations for the organizations and programs. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the president and board of the Winnebago County Community Mental Health, Winnebago County as follows that the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board shall recommend funding allocations not to exceed $59,954,466.99. The Winnebago County Mental Health Board shall fund the following renewal proposals contingent upon the execution of funding agreements and the work plans for one year of the funding with an opportunity to request additional years of funding before the contract it in end date. Um, the organizations are as follows. Boys and Girls Club of Rockford, the project name, social emotional skill building and severe emotional disturbance in the services. They will receive a total amount of $411,537.10. The City of Rockford and Human Service Department, the impact integrated mobile partner action crisis team. They will receive $605,993. The Lifescape program, the senior mental health program, they'll receive $168,811. Prairie State Legal Services, legal services for Winnebago residents with mental illness they will receive $33,696. Shelter Care Ministry, Jubilee Community Outreach and Housing Stability Program, they will receive $82,600. The University of Illinois College of Medicine, Rockford, the CLEAN, the Clinical Learning and Education <coughs> and Addiction, they will receive $448,300. The University of Illinois College of Medicine Rockford Merit Medical Evaluation Response Initiative Team, Enhanced Services um, and Community Prevention Education. They will receive $229,482.67. 60, 
Moving on to Winnebago County, the Juvenile Detention Center, reducing isolation through expanded behavioral health continuation. They will receive $452,481.81. Winnebago County Juvenile Resource Intervention Center, behavioral health continuation. They'll receive $192,404.02. Um, dollars and two cents. Winnebago County Resource Intervention Center Rick Behavioral Health Continuation. They'll receive $192,404.05. The Winnebago County Health Department Trauma Informed Community Care Coordination Continuation. They'll receive $160,569.43. Youth Services Network. Uh, they are for mental health for homeless youth. They'll receive $428,839.99. Yeah, these are the one year grants um, that, that I have just um, ended reading. So moving on into the next group, uh, the Winnebago County Mental Health Board shall fund the following renewal proposals <coughs> contingent upon the execution of funding agreements and work plans for three years of funding. Align that Rockford, how are the children's systems changed through community data? They'll receive $942,205. Boys and Girls Club Rockford Barbell Youth Self-Regulation Program, they'll receive $775,354. Uh, the Bright Point Doula Program will receive $778,000 and, um, pardon me, $778,812. Uh, Bright Point, the EPIC Program, they will receive $1,227,609. City of Rockford, the Crisis um, Co-Response Team. They'll receive $6,368,235.74. City of Rockford Mobile Integrated Health Mental Health Program. They'll receive $4,864,321.16. City of Rockford Inclusive Wellness Programming Program Ming at the Family Peace Center will receive $882. $1,700. Crusader Behavioral Health Services will receive $3,133,338. Family Counseling Service, Service Expansion 3.0, $809,713. NAMI Northern Illinois, the Support Education and Mental Health Advocacy, they'll receive $771,353.65. NIFNI, Rockford Area Case Management Training and Community of Practice, and they'll receive $337,897.35. RAMP Mental Health Services and Training, will, they will receive $1,000,000. $20,421. Remedies, Renewing Lives, Domestic Violence Therapy and Advocacy Project. They'll receive $325,347.22. Rockford Park District Foundation. The unique mental health services through the development of the Lockwood Indoor Equine Center. They'll receive $1,355,496.19. The Rockford Sexual Assault Counseling Outreach Therapist, they will receive $529,620. Rosecrans Access to Care, they'll receive $7,650, I'm sorry, $7,665,000. $176.59. Rose Plants of Winnebago System of Care, they'll receive $5,269,719. Dollars. 
Summit Academy, Summit Academy Transition Counselor and Mental Health Curriculum, they'll receive $231,708. The Tommy Coral Memorial Foundation, Family and Community Mental Health First Aid Training, they're going to receive $98,421. The University of Illinois College of Medicine, the CARE Program, Compassion and Appreciation for Recovery and Everyone. They'll receive $846,648.66. Winnebago County, the uh, Assistant State's Attorney Mental Health, they'll receive $368,247.19. Winnebago County Sheriff's Office, Winnebago County Jail, Behavioral Health Program Enhanced. They'll receive $5,967.23 um, and six cents. Uh, the YMCA of Rock River Valley, the protecting the youth mental wellness of the YMCA year two. They'll receive $558,542.44. The Youth Services Networking um, Inc, uh, the Youth Trauma Clinic, They'll receive $1,881,172.76. So that's a three-year funding. Moving on, the Winnebago County Mental Health Board shall not fund the following renewal programs for funding. Bright Point Trio Program, the Circle of Change Youth Dog and First Responder Dog Program. The next section is Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board shall fund the following new proposals contingent upon the execution of funding agreements and work plans for one year of funding with an opportunity to request additional years of funding before the contract end date. Marshmallow Hope's nonprofit organization, Suicide Prevention Empowering You Through Psychotherapy and Mental Wellness, Total award is $315,245. The next section is the Winnebago County Mental Health Board shall fund the following new proposals contingent upon the execution of funding agreements and work plans for three years of funding. Brook Road United Methodist Southeast Rockford Children and Family Community Wellness Response Program. $198,980. City of Rockford, the Crisis Co-Responder Team CCRT Expansion, $627,550.36. NAMI, Northern Illinois, Recovery Family Support Specialist, $186,740.40. Rockford Sexual Assault Counseling Group Therapy for Older Adults, $17,500. The next section is Winnebago County shall not fund the following new proposals um, for funding. Alignment Rockford Ready to Learn Early Childhood Support, Stepping Stones of Rockford Emergency Shelter Program, Winnebago County 17th Judicial Circuit Court Wellness Track Liaison, <clears throat> Winnebago County Health Department Winning Harm Reduction Program. <clears throat> okay. Um, right. All right. So this is resolution number 2024 X, and we will need. Um, a roll call for this. Oh, yeah, we do need a motion. So I need a motion. I need a motion that the resolution be approved. Okay. And second. Second. Okay. Well, good. So, any comments, any questions? You want to take a rest? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got my water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I will do no cost. Well, I, I just want some clarification on the programs that weren't funded. This was based on our individual assessments, and these were the low numbers. Yes. All right. Any other? Um, hearing none, 
Um, Marianne Abadi, yes. Dr. Copeland. Yes. Uh, Dr. Giardini. Yes. Dr. Gorski. Yes. Dick Kooner. Yes. Wendy Larson Bennett. Yes. Tim Neighbors. Yes. Linda Sanquist. Mohammed Yunus. That's it. So the motion has passed, so we can move on to the next motion. Um, <clears throat> this is resolution 2024-XX. Resolution authorizing the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board funding and allocation of special project funds for accelerator award applications. Whereas the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board published the three-year strategic plan defining priorities and target population for the year program years 2024 to 2026. Whereas the Winnebago County Mental Health Board published a notice of funding opportunity seeking proposals designed to be funds uh, with accelerate time sensitive work and launch impactful capital improvement projects regarding improving mental health and substance abuse services, specifically in Winnebago County, proposals to impact human capital, the skills, knowledge, and experience possessed by an individual or population viewed in terms of their value or cost to an organization or community, social capital, the networks of relationships, among people who live and work in a particular community, enabling that the community to function effectively and physical capital, which is tangible and human-made goods or assets such as building materials and supply. Whereas the Winnebago County Mental Health Board received four applications requesting funding totaling $2,130,000. Up to 10 million is available for funding accelerator awards. Whereas the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board members reviewed, evaluated, and scored the four applications according to the established scoring rubrics that were published alongside the notice of funding and developed recommendations for these organizations and programs. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Winnebago County Mental Health Board as follows. Um, the Winnebago Mental Health Board shall fund the following proposals after review of the application. First, Winnebago County, the Justice Involved Peer Navigation Program, amount is 35,000. The City of Rockford Family Peace Center, the Family Peace Center expansion for $875,000. The Winnebago County Mental Health Board shall not fund the following proposals after review of the applications. The Rockford Barbell Youth Regulation uh, Self-Regulation Facility capacity scale of the organization does not align with funding proposal. And the LIF, <coughs> the Mobile Harm Reduction Outreach Program and Recovery Services capacity and scale of the organization does not align with the funding proposal. So that is our second resolution that I will need motions for. So moved. So moved. So moved. Okay. Second and mm -hmm. And Bill. So you move and close up. Okay. You move and then you Okay. Any further discussion or comment? Hearing none. All right. Uh, roll call. Dr. Copeland. Yes. Dr. Jardini. Yes. Dr. Gorski. Yes. Dick Pooner. Yes. Wendy Larson Bennett. Yes. Tim Neighbors. Yes. Sanquist, Mohammed Yunus. Mm -hmm. Marianne Abadi. Yes. Okay. All right. Moving on to our last resolution. <laughs> which is resolution number 2024-XXX. The rest of this resolution authorizes the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board Accelerator Awards preliminary review determinations for applications received. Whereas the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board published a three-year strategic plan defining priorities and target population for program years four to six. 
whereas the Winnebago County Mental Health Board published a notice of funding seeking proposals designed to be funds that accelerate time-sensitive work and launch impactful capital improvement projects regarding improving mental health and substance abuse services, specifically in Winnebago County. Proposals to impact human capital, the skills, knowledge, and experience possessed by an individual or population viewed in terms of their value or cost to an organization or community. Social capital, the network of relationships among people who live and work in a particular community, enabling that community to function effectively. And physical capital, tangible and human-made goods or assets, such as building, buildings, material, and supplies. Whereas the Winnebago County Mental Health Board has up to $10 million available for funding accelerator awards. The accelerator award decision will be based on statutory mandates and community priorities as laid out by the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board strategic plan. Emphasis will be placed on the proposal's strength in addressing each of the following criteria. Individuals to be served by the accelerator award, transformative impact of the accelerator award in human, social, or physical capital capacity, and scale of the organization in relation to the proposal, timeline of the proposal, and organization budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Winnebago County Community Mental Health Board as follows. Um, section one, ready for review. The Winnebago County Mental Health Board is willing to evaluate and score the following accelerator awards. Regional Office of Education, number four safe and secure schools. Rockford Park District, Lockwood Indoor Equine Center. Regional Office of Education, the SOAR Academy, SOAR Academy Playground. Community Foundation of Northern Illinois, addressing access and coordination of behavioral health care. Section two, ineligible for review. The Winnebago County Mental Health Board is not willing to review the proposal due to one or more reasons causing ineligibility for funding. Resilience Counseling. Resilience Counseling Expansion Project does not fit with um, strategic plan, not serving or aligned to target population. Northern Illinois Center for Nonprofit Work um, Excellence. Youth Mental Health Care System of Care Implementation of quality, accessible, affordable, and equitable strategies. Does not improve system capacity, no value added in perpetuity. So that is resolution. The next resolution I'll need motions for. Okay. Yes. Second. All right. Any questions, comments? Hearing none. I will do roll call for this again. Dr. Copeland? Yes. Dr. Jardini? Yes. Dr. Gorski? Yes. Dick Kooner? Yes. Wendy Larson Bennett? Yes. Tim Neighbors? Yes. Linda Sanquist? Mohammed Yunus? Marianne Abadi? Yes. Okay. All right. We have gotten through all of our resolutions. So I have no. Uh, discussion items on the agenda, and I don't have other matters today either. Uh, Bill, uh, Marianne, there's a, a uh, an event tomorrow evening, I believe, to discuss sales tax. Yes, there is. Issues. Is it here? Is it Train Norma? Norma. Norma. Um, are you going to be there, Jason? Did I understand that correctly? Uh, yes, I've been asked to participate okay. on the panel, and. Um, Marianne has um, uh, given me the authorization to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was what, what time is that? 5.30. Good. Glad you'll be there. Okay. okay. I would uh, make a motion for adjournment. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.